I am the true alpha male, the living legend of hair loss. I made a video that was not actually about hair loss, but I added it in the title, and now I'm making another video to respond to that comment, and this video is about hair loss. Here we go. The video is called, I don't care about, or I don't fear hair loss, but I do care about controlling my weight. You know, I, it's important to me because I can control that. I can't control my DNA that determines whether I go bald, but I can control whether I'm overweight or not. I, I really can, we all can. And so uh, I'm looking at a comment who came in from Andrew Moss, one of my longtime viewers. And he says, at three, three minutes and 27 seconds, that's where he want, he's referring to that video. Here's what he says, quote, and when you turn 30, testosterone levels dip by 1% each year on average. That should, in theory, mean less DHT is produced. Based on this, there's no wonder that the older you are, the more stable your hair is, and the more stable you are psychologically." End quote. So let's kind of sort that out a little bit. So the concept is, let's go back to one of my hair loss theories. Age 35 ultimately determines whether you're going to be bald or not. Because however much hair you have at age 35, if you've still got most of it, then what you're going to lose for the second half of your life is going to be quite minimal compared to what you lost up into that point. That's one of my hair loss theories, which in conjunction to that, I always say, look at a photo of yourself at age one. That's a projection of you at 35. Is it foolproof? Does it work 100% of the time? No. But it, for me, it was right on. I've made many videos showing me when I was 35 with my one-year-old photo, and you can see how it perfectly matches up. I'm not saying it's foolproof, it's one of my many theories, just like if you can grow a full connected beard by the time you're 18, you're also more likely to be the guy who's going to be losing his hair compared to the guy who's, you know, took a DNA test. Oh, it's 100% Japanese? Well, you're less likely to grow a beard and less likely to have much body in your, uh, hair in your body, but you're less likely to lose your hair too. I mean, there's lots of things that we can look at and line up, and if you're interested, just search my videos, you'll see it's a matter of looking at the big picture. Um, so ultimately, age 35, that's when you look in the mirror and think, well, do I still have most of my hair? Okay, well, for the rest of my life, I'll still have most of my hair too. I may gradually lose more and more, but not quite as aggressively as leading up to age 35. And so Andrew uh, is telling us this. I haven't researched it. I don't know if it's true or not, and honestly, I don't care because I don't care about hair loss, but I'm obligated to make these videos because the free market keeps watching them and I keep making money. I'm like, I guess I won't turn down $500 a month to keep talking about this stuff if that's really what makes you happy. So it says, in theory, that means less DHT is produced. So, you know, and I, and I will point out the obvious too. A lot of people will say, well, Nick, you know, why are you talking about hair loss? You're almost 40. If, if you've got that much hair by now, you're probably not gonna just go bald within the next couple of years. Yeah, I know that, like, that's, the, that's the whole concept. It, and, and like he was saying, psychologically too. See, the, I'm telling you, because you're still away from it, whoever you are watching my videos, the closer you live to age 35, the less you care about something stupid as your hair. And the more you care, about being valued for what you're actually judged by. You're actually judged by your confidence level and your ability to help other people and making other people feel good about themselves and knowing what you can do, your skills and abilities that will allow you to make money and totally owning what you're not good at and laughing about it. Like those things, making people laugh, communicating, those things matter. And, but you have to face a lot of rejection you have to have, take risks and sometimes lose and sometimes win. That has to happen a lot. And finally, by your 35th birthday, you start realizing, oh, you mean it's a choice to be offended? It's a choice to be disrespected? It's a choice that someone hurt my feelings? It's a choice to forgive someone? It's a choice to put myself in a situation where I'm not offended, so therefore I don't have to forgive anybody to begin with? See, when you live enough life, around 35 all that kicks in you know i'm three years past that so i'm really like enjoying all this knowledge but most of my viewers are younger than me and they're not there yet so yes age 35 it is that a vertex that it's called where the psychology meets also a pre a preview of okay well however much hair you still have 
you're probably gonna be hanging on to most of that the rest of your life. So what that means is, if I were to keep this awkward haircut, then my hairline would be, you know, exposed. But ultimately, with this much hair, as long as my hair is at least an inch and a half, most people won't even notice the receding hairline because I'm post age 35. But also, more importantly, I don't care. Remember, your hair loss journey ends not when you realize, that, oh, there's a cure for hair loss, because there's not. Your hair loss journey ends when you stop caring. And so, that's what I keep telling you. Imagine the blessing you would have. Imagine the blessing you would have if before the age of 35, you, you end your hair loss journey by not caring anymore, by owning your true masculine identity. That'd be a major advantage if you were 22 and got that figured out, which is kind of where I was. It was about 22 when I basically stopped caring about it. And that was a good place to be. I already accepted, okay, I'll be, I'll be bald by 33. I'll enjoy these last couple of years of it while I can. And then it didn't really happen. So, but ultimately that's how you end your illustration. Right? What a blessing if you can be young and realize that. What a blessing if you can be young and realizing that being offended is always a choice. So don't choose to be offended. And then you're more confident. And then people actually like you more. We go around thinking, oh, if only I was more dot, 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 then people would like me more. You're probably wrong. They'll probably not even notice if you were more that one thing. Instead, they're judging the reason they like or don't like you. Hey, the neighbor just turned on the light. The reason they like or don't like you have a lot more to do with things you probably aren't even aware of that they want you to change. See, that's emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is thinking, well, what could I do to actually get people to like me more? I already told you. Make people think that you're confident. Make people laugh. Be good at communicating at people by making them feel good about themselves. Figure out what you're good at, what you're bad at, and totally own it. Help other people. Get people to talk about themselves instead of yourselves. They've got their own insecurities they're dealing with. So build them up. And then you appear to be the hero. Your comments belong right here.